Right, down the line in a studio in York is the man who writes the jokes for co-op Christmas crackers, Victor Lewis Smith. Victor, do you hang around bars? Did you just impersonate him? I, I sort of tried, Victor. It was, it was rude, but it was, uh, it was uh, I, unmissable. It was, it, it was, it, I, t- I do hang around bars. I did try to uh, start an agency, actually, for topless bar men, but it never caught on. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a topless barman these days. But I was E.D. Armin's cocktail shaker as well, as you know, a few years ago. Yes, that voice of his, it, he's got the Elgin marbles in his mouth, that gross man, isn't he? <laughs> Why do, he says Beezer instead of Boozer. How do you get from Boozer to Beezer? We once, we once interviewed him on a, a programme where he, he broke into a Cockney impersonation and then couldn't get back. Back on track with his own accent. <laughs> <laughs> Quite Victor, possible. I understand you're taking your one-man show to Edinburgh. That's right, Ned. It's called 101 <laughs> Things a Boy Scout Can Do with a Sink Plunger, a 9-volt battery and a piece of string. Watch the bit where I'm dressed as a tube of KY jelly on next week's Roger Cook programme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frankly, it's been a traumatic week in my luxury penthouse flat in York. After last week's studio massacre, my whippet got the taste for blood, and in a frenzied orgy of Charles Manson-esque bloodletting and listening to the Val Dunican cover version of Helter Skelter... Skelter, skelter, biddly biddly biddly, you get to the bottom and you get to the top. He's been indulging in gross acts of rubbing himself against old age pensioners on the circle line and was arrested yesterday. At the same time, Mrs. Tribley, having just finished reading the I Spy book of Freudian psychosexual disorders, has decided I was born in the wrong body and has been giving me a clandestine course of hormone injections. Let me explain in psychoanalytical terms. Mrs. Tribley's treatment, released by id, which instantly scuttled across the lino. Come here. Come here. Come here. And my id, dressed as a transvestite, made it to a telephone box where, out of control, it called Warner Brothers Studios in Hollywood in a camp bid for film stardom. Brackets, tenuous link into phone call, close brackets. <laughs> Warner Personnel. Oh, hello, is that Warner? Is that, wa- wa- is that Warner Films? Hello there. I'm phoning from England, which is why the quality of the line is so tacky. Uh-huh. Um, you're Warner Brothers, aren't you? Right. Yes, uh, uh, I've been to one of your holiday camps in Britain. It was lovely. I could, I've, had a few, I've, I've had a few experiences there, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like there in Burbank? Right now, it's um, going to be in the 80s today. Guess what it's like in Britain? What? Foggy, and we're all wearing top hats. You're kidding. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, right, now. Uh, I've just been on to uh, Metro Golda Meyer, is it? Another film company? Yes, it is. Mm. They were extremely terse, very rude. They were? Yeah, I've told them I've just been sacked from the BBC. Do you know the BBC? No, sir. BB- BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. I mean, it's a load of toot, anyway, because they've just sacked me. I mentioned I, I'd made some reference to Mrs. Thatcher being the bearded lady. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, these people, I said I want a job with uh, Metro Gold on my air, and they said something about me being... Uh, is it a, f- a, f- a faggot, an expression you use out there? Oh, you're kidding. That's terrible. Yes, they said you're a faggot. And I said to them, I'm a personal friend of Rod Steiger... Which I am. Every time Rod comes down to uh, to Battledon, that's where I live, Battledon. We we often uh, we often have uh, some good times together. Uh, now the problem is that I'm going to leave England because I've had enough of this stinking Kazi, and uh, I want to go to Burbank, uh, Hollywood, and I've had some acting experience, um, and I wondered if you're interested in uh, my curriculum vital. Okay, what you have to do is send us a resume as soon as you can. A, a what, my dear? Yeah. A what? Resume. What's all your previous work experience? Mm. Send us that and let us know when you're coming out. When I'm coming out? Yes. <laughs> you're ten years too late. Huh. <laughs> uh, uh. It's a funny thing about the telephone lines, isn't it? Because sometimes when I speak, you're speaking, and we speak at the same time. Yes, I know. So I'll tell you what, shall I say over, and then when you, when I've finished, I'll say over, and when you finish, you can say over, and then we can have a conversation. Otherwise, it's costing me a lot of money. Over. Okay, over. Now, um, uh, tell me if it's worth applying. I've got a key role in Annie Get Your Gun in uh, Bridlington. Uh-huh. And I was also Uncle Benny in uh, Radio Reykjavik's Children's Hour. Uh, well, Thursday, and what we do, though, is when we receive your resume... We will send it to casting, the casting department, and they will in turn look it over. And over? Did you say over? Can I come in now? Yes. So, do you said over? Over. Sorry, you said look it over, and I thought you were saying over. <laughs> <laughs>
You didn't say over. Over? Over. Uh, now, the one thing that worries me, actually, it worries my mother a great deal, actually, because I was speaking to my mother last night. She said, it's all right, if you want to go, Bevis, she said, if you want to go, Bevis, you want to go to Hollywood, that's all right, Bevis. She said, you go to Hollywood, you leave us, she said. You treat us like a load of old toot. I said, I'll take the dog. I said, she said, one thing she's worried about is, is there a lot of cocaine snorting, that sort of thing, because I don't want to be involved in that. Over. It all depends on what type of crowd you hang around with. Over. Do you have many famous stars there? Yes, many. Many who? Many a lot. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant right. as in Minnie Mouse. Over. No, we have fat. It was Fatty Arbuckle, uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, I believe so. He was a big boy, wasn't he? Yes, very. I, I, I don't want to arrive and uh, have to sort of go through all this casting couch stuff. Over. That's, that, that's how it goes. That's showbiz, don't you know that? You didn't say over. Over. Oh. Right then. Can I just give you a quick audition now? Because you can hear my voice and tell me what you think. Here we go. Rigorous. I've had a few. But then again, too few to mention. I've lived. Over. Over? Over. Over. I thought she was very patient with you, Victor. Very nice.